In this message, we're going to talk about something very, very amazing. As we continue our series on the seven ecclesia, the, the message to the seven churches in Revelation chapters 2 and 3, and we're going to talk about the church at Smyrna. Now, this is a series, and I encourage you to um, be abreast of what um, we've covered thus far, especially the second death, the, the lake of fire, Gehenna, okay? It was to the church of, um, at Smyrna, it was said, um, to he who overcomes will not be hurt at the second death, okay? So we're going to talk about the church at Smyrna, and we're going to um, also talk about the incarceration, the prison, the bottomless pit that the devil is placed into, and... We're going to show you something really, really amazing. Okay, let's go first to Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit. In Greek, this word is abyssos, uh, where we get the word abyss. And a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And he cast him into the abyss, or bottomless pit, and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should not deceive the nations anymore till the thousand years should be fulfilled. After that, he must be loosed for a little season. Okay, now let's go down to verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to the battle. The number of them is as the sand of the sea. So this is the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war of Gog and Magog. Okay, and they went up from the breadth of the earth, encompassed the camp of the saints um, and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven. That's also described in Ezekiel. But what we can clearly see is there's a point by which the angel has the, uh, uh, comes down from heaven having the key to the bottomless pit, and, and Satan is placed, uh, the dragon, the old serpent, the devil, Satan, is placed in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. And we want to continue to take a moment to explain this incarceration of the devil and here we are now in Isaiah chapter 14, and how you are fallen, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations. For you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit in the mount of the congregation on the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the Most High. Now you can see my Bible is very old. And I first got it as a teenager, and you can see what I wrote here. Die, Satan. Because I've been looking forward to this day when the devil is incarcerated for a long time. So I've studied this for many years. Um, I got this Bible in 1985. And, you know, when I was reading this, that's why you see highlights and you'll think, see things like that. But um, in verse 15 of Isaiah 14, it says, Yet you shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. So this is the uh, abyss that we saw in Revelation chapter 20. And they that see you shall narrowly look upon you and consider you, saying, Is this the man that made the earth tremble and did shake the kingdoms? That made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof? That opened not the house of the prisoners? And all the kings of the nations, and even all of them, lay in glory, every one in his own house. But you are cast to the grave like an abominable branch, as a raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with the sword, and go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass is trodden underfoot. So this is the incarceration of the bottomless pit that we, of course, saw in Revelation 20. Now let's also look at it in Ezekiel chapter 28. 
Before we go to Ezekiel 28, actually, let's go back to verse 9 in Isaiah 14, because it's continually uh, describing this. Hell from beneath is moved at you to meet you at your coming. It stirred up the dead for the even the chief ones of the earth is raised up the thrones, all the kings of the nations. They shall speak and say, are you become weak as we are you become like us your your pomp is down to the grave and the noise of the, the vowels these are these are instruments and the worm is spread out over you okay so again this is lucifer the son of the morning going to hell and here we can see ezekiel 28 um, talking about how he was in, the, in Eden, in the Garden of God. And again, there are instruments, tablets, and pipes that were a part of him. He also had various um, gemstones, okay? But that's why you can see the music around Nebuchadnezzar is because the anointed cherub is counterfeiting uh, the things he learned around the throne when he was in Eden, in the Garden of God. But then we can see in verse 14 of Ezekiel 28, but you are the anointed cherub that covered. I have set you so, and you are upon the holy mountain of God, and you walked up and down the midst of the stones of fire. You were perfect in all your ways from the day that you were created, till iniquity was found in you by the multitude of your merchandise they have filled the, the midst of you with violence, and you have sinned. Therefore, I cast you out as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thy heart was lifted up because of your beauty, because you have corrupted by the wisdom by reason of the brightness. And I cast you to the ground, and I lay you before kings, that they may behold you, that uh, you have defiled your, the sanctuaries and the multitude with your iniquities and the iniquity of the, of the traffic or the trading. Therefore, I bring forth a fire from the midst of you and devour you, and I will bring you to the ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold you. And all they may know that among the people be a, astonished at you, and you shall be a terror and never uh, heard from again. So we want to take a moment to explain this uh, moment in time when the, uh, the devil, the Satan, the dragon is cast into the bottomless pit for a thousand years before we look at the verses here to the church at Smyrna in Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Now what you're looking at here is an app called Bible Gate, uh, excuse me, Bible Hub. This one is Bible Hub. And what you're looking at is a direct translation. So what that means is they are taking the old Greek, which you can see here in black, and then they're, they're giving you the way you pronounce it, and then they're giving you the Strong's Concordance number. And then they're writing in orange, in English, what it says. Now, for the most part, the verses that we read were per perfectly fine translations. But I really encourage you to get this app and to read the Bible this way, because I'm going to show you something that's going to shock you. And a simple word can change everything. And that's what this whole video is about. So we did the background of the incarceration of the, the devil. Okay. And now we can see it in Revelation 2 verse 10. So let's, let's start off. Um, Basically, we're just going to read the way it's directly translated, guys. So it's going to sound a little funny. So not fear what you are about to suffer. Now, pay close attention. Behold what it says. This is direct what it says. Behold about to cast the devil. Okay, see that? Behold about to cast the devil. Now, 
then what you can see is you have an X and it says some of you okay but if we actually look at this word 1537 in the Strong's Concordance you can see it's X okay and, and look what it says guys X or X it means from from out of okay now let's go back and here's our word X so remember it was from not of you but from out of you so behold about to cast the devil from you that's right so it is it is the devil that's being cast into prison okay so remember we saw in Revelation 20 the devil cast into prison okay and then it says so that uh, tested okay so you see it's you might but that's not necessarily there it's it's a testing or a uh, period of testing and and then have so you see how you have all these U's okay this U um, Hymon can mean us so the devil is cast out of us into prison now this U is not there this U over here is not there okay these are just things that were added to try to make a a sentence okay but let's pay close attention to what's going on so there's a period of testing okay that will have thalipsin uh, tribulation days 10 okay now the days 10 relates to the word in Greek for a thousand and let's let's show you that so thousand is Strong's Concordance G5507 and I'm not sure how to pronounce it I think this is Chayo or something like that a thousand or a millennium now 10 inscription in scripture can um, already express symbolic meanings of completeness and so this word uh, is related to 10 deca and the 10 days are a product of 10 times 10 times 10 or 10 cubed so 10 cubed is thousand okay so that's why the 10 days thus um, relate to a thousand years so remember it is this means that it's the devil that's cast into prison not us okay and he goes into prison 10 times 10 times 10 days or a thousand years okay so the the same angel um, that we can see uh, clearly there now further proof of this is in Revelation chapter 1 17 and it says fear not I am the first and the last and I am he that lives was dead and behold I am alive forevermore amen and have the keys of hell and death Hades Thanatos in the Greek okay so notice this um, description of Christ that is saying about himself I am the first and the last I'm he that lives and was dead and behold I am alive for every more so every church has a uh, description of Christ so this one we can see for Smyrna and unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write these things says the first and the last which was dead and is alive okay so this admonition that he said there he had the keys of hell and death okay in the same admonition we find in Smyrna of the things of uh, uh, the these things saith the first the last which was dead and is alive more so he has the keys okay so the keys relate to the devil okay so you can see fear not those things now this is what the King James says the devil shall cast you into prison but no we're seeing it, it's fear not behold the devil will be cast into prison a thousand years 
and we'll have a period of trial, tribulation, okay, or trial or testing 10 days. Be faithful unto death. And then it says, so he that overcomes, um, let he, okay, will get a crown of life, right? But uh, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the ecclesia. He that overcomes will not be hurt at the second death. So the gates of hell cannot prevail against his ecclesia. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, I will say unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock, Petra, I will build my ecclesia. And the gates of hell, Hades, shall not prevail against it. I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So through the scriptures, we can see that it is Satan that is going to be cast into prison, not us. Amen. He's going to be bound a thousand years and the word of God will be fulfilled. Amen. Isn't that amazing? We can clearly see if we go to the original language of the Greek, we can see that it is the devil cast into prison, not us. Now, guys, I just want to state that when I submit information like this to you, I take it very serious. And I also um, have someone that I consult with who can read the ancient Greek and run the uh, scenarios um, before him before I, I uh, share it with you. And he, and he concurred that, yes, in fact... Behold, about to cast the devil from you or from us into prison. So he agreed entirely that the X here, um, and also cross-referencing his ancient Greek sources, does mean from out of. Okay? So I just want you to know that I'm not just making stuff up in my mind of what, you know, I'm, I'm cross-referencing and I'm, and I'm sourcing this with reliable um, people that are knowledgeable about the ancient Greek before I submit it to you. Thanks for watching. This is a playlist called The Seven Ecclesia. And I'll put a link in the description field for the uh, playlist, the things we have talked over, um, about thus far. And guys, basically we're covering the, the deeper mysteries, as you can see in this video. And you know, the Most High's entire plan of salvation um, exhibited through Jesus Christ, expressed through the uh, seven ecclesia, are uh, things of great, great importance. And so I encourage you to read these seven churches, you know, almost daily, at least weekly, to um, understand these things. So as we say, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, as we mentioned in the beginning of the video, please watch Gehenna. Because Gehenna, the lake of fire, is what happens at the end. Okay, so things are leading up to a judgment. So, thanks for watching. And as we say, watch and pray that you be accounted worthy to escape all these things. In Jesus Christos' name, Alpha and Omega, the Olive and the Tav. Amen.